guys out for a quick one. Honest to the ball, man. Honest to the ball. All right, let's get it rolling. All right, um, this is for me a, a time to reflect. Uh, I've got to my left Robert Shipman, my oldest brother, DJ Johnson, Caleb Coward, and in front of me, uh, my dad, Robert Shipman. Um, we go way back, way back. Um, thinking about the beginning of when we really started playing competitive ball. Um, all the people at this table were involved, so this is just um, a time to kind of reflect about it, talk about it, um, look at where baseball has come, especially from like a, a youth and travel perspective, and just kind of talk about our careers and answer any questions that, that uh, there may be uh, for today. So first of all, what's going on, guys? Going good, man. Going good. I'm trying to stay warm. Yes, yeah, getting inside. Every, I think everybody's good. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm interested to 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 uh, to ask a few questions, you know, just just being here, just because in my mind, um, when you guys get older, you'll you'll see um, some of the younger folks that you've worked with or, or been around or been around the family. Even though you, you guys grow up, you're still that guy, <laughs> you know. You're still those. It's like your moms. If you ever heard your mom say, "You're still my baby," you're still my. That there's a reason they say that, you know, because although, yeah, we see you getting older, we see you, you get some bass in your voice and you get a wrinkle here and there, you, you're still my baby. So I, in, in, in the game of baseball, um, man, you, you're still my guys. Uh, just, just quickly, um, I got a question for each of you because, you know, I, I remember way back when, when they used to let us wear cleats in, in, in baseball, uh, you know, I remember thinking about some of the people when I first started playing my first pro game, I started thinking about some of the people that was involved to get me there. Um, what think about some of your um, your highlights and your moments? You know, who or what? You know, did you did you think about? Um, if I start with a uh, DJ, um, one of my one of my clear for. Um, you know, I remember one of my clearest memories is when you were, we were perfect game and you were about to face South Cal. Mm -hmm. South, and South Cal had, I don't know how many D1 professionals on that team, but we, we knew we was up against it. Um, and you was pitching that day mm -hmm. and you were working on, and you hadn't perfected it, but you knew you needed it. You were working on the change up. Right. I remember clearly that, hey, you didn't have your, per se, best stuff, right. but you had that change up and wasn't afraid to use it. At what point did you become like, hey, I can do this, no matter who I'm facing? I feel like that game gave me a lot of confidence because, <laughs> to be honest, these guys right here that are sitting at this table, they're probably a bit more advanced than me when I was younger. And then when I got around you, I started to develop my game, started to take a turn. But once I pitched that game, pretty much gave me the confidence to know that maybe I can take this a little bit further. My changeup has always been my worst pitch. But like you said, some days you don't have it, some days you do. You can feel as a pitcher, as a player, as soon as you make that first pitch in the bullpen, even before you get on the mound, you can feel like, hey, this might not be my best day, but you just got to fight through it. But that game right there gave me a little bit of confidence. And then I say my first varsity game. In high school, I played a little bit of JV, and Coach Osley gave me a chance to take a senior spot. Once I started that game, that gave me a little bit of confidence to let me know that I can take this far. I got a pretty good future in baseball. But I say my first first instance of knowing when I started working with you after the tryout, when I came to Brooks County, I had to come back try out again. That's when I knew, like, hey, maybe I can take this a little bit further. Yeah, uh, just to follow up, and then I. And I'll move on and get out of Aaron's way. <laughs> you know, uh, your demeanor to me sort of struck me because, you know, I called you early in camp, the, the baby face assassin. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at you, good or bad, I couldn't tell whether you was winning or losing. You know, but you had like a, 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 a stilly eye way about you when the game started. You know, it, it was like, you're not gonna beat beat me. Is, is there somebody in your family? Where where'd that come from? That hey, look, it's on. 
You grandma. know, it's on and popping. What, what, where they come from? <laughs> Tell me about grandma. Everybody at this table knows grandma. <laughs> Everybody who comes across her calls her grandma. She's the one who gave, put the dog in me, if you want to <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I'm not going to... Body language is very important in baseball. I know you teach it. I try to teach it to the younger ones, whether I'm winning, losing, doing good or bad. I try to keep the same demeanor about me. But as far as the competitive nature, me coming at you, you're not going to beat me one-on-one. -on -one. I take it personal. Grandma. Yeah, for yeah, sure. no doubt. Uh, just, just to close out with what you said, uh, we're, we're at perfect game. Um, Somewhere, I think we're in the main complex. We're probably in the East, the East Cobb complex or whatnot. And there's scouts everywhere. And, and we started to develop a little cult following. The, the biggest following was Caleb's group, right? You know, but you know, the Nat Five to a national. I mean, we, we had a Lower pretty, group. pretty, yes, pretty uh, solid following. Uh, the Clemson guy saw you play, mm -hmm. and um. We we jumped on somebody pretty good, but right. but he saw you play. He specifically said, "I remember this um, clearly." DJ Johnson is the best player in this whole complex, <laughs> you know. And I just think that's a testament to what that guy saw and, and what we all saw in you, you know, because you was killing the ball and you were shut down, and it looked like he was just walking, taking a walk in the park, doing it. So that's a testament to you. I appreciate um, you, coach. Yeah, yeah, no, no, he does well earned. Um, Robert, um, there was a time when we were playing with the uh, Valdoster Rangers. It, it might have even been Hurricane before, right before we went to the Rangers. Right. There was a there was a period of time where you were just you, you were you had lots of power, but you was really uncoordinated. <laughs> you, you remember that you yeah. you was trying to come into your own. It was like you was developing your man body, you know, but you were still twelve years old and. And people starting to check your birth certificate and stuff. So, what what you what what sort of mentality did you have to take during that period of time before you made the transition to hey being coordinated? And then once you got coordinated, what what uh, led you to say hey you know man I, I can I can take on these tough situations and, and when the, when I come to the plate or I have to dig the ball out of the dirt or something like that. Uh, for me personally, it was. Uh... The people I know, we, we lived right next to the high school in Prince County. So the old high school was literally, <clears throat> literally walking distance. So uh, I can hit a bell ring from the from the living room. So uh, what we do at night sometimes is uh, go over to the weight room. And Coach Mitchell would be in there. And we would be in there. And I'll just get extra box runs and bladders and uh, jump rope and stuff like that. And that stuff really played, played a part because – it's all about coordination when you're doing that thing. Uh, you got to have some kind of rhythm. You got to have some coordination, and doing that on top of continuing just to get reps, um, and then mentally, mentally just knowing, hey, look, it's rough right now, but uh, as we continue to progress and work, I'll eventually get better at picks and stuff like that. Things I don't like. I don't like short hops. I don't like fastballs inside. I, I don't like stuff like that. Uh, I was comfortable with. When I can extend my hands when I'm hitting, I was comfortable then. And then uh, short, I mean, uh, long hops and other things like that were, were easy for me. But the things of that nature, I just had to get used to. Um, I remember going to Georgia and, and talking to Coach Perno and saying, hey, man, I come from Region 1 AA in Brooks County. Nobody throws hard except for Caleb and DJ. So <laughs> I'm not used to hitting 90. So I was worried. And he was like, ah, Chef, you get used to it. It's true. The more reps you get with that, the more you used used to it you get so it got to the point where 89 it was like oh that's a breeze right. and then it, nothing got strenuous until you see 96 or something like that it's like okay all right now we back home but to answer your question directly uh just put in extra work it was hey i'm not, i'm not gonna get coordinated by sitting at home yeah <laughs> i need to go and get uh get reps i need right. to go do extra work um and as far as uh my hitting goes and getting confident hitting um I need to get extra reps in the cage. I need to go out in the, in the field and at least do it once so I can tell myself I can't do it. Yeah. Uh, to follow up, um, there was a time where I said, okay, we, we need to figure out and find out somebody other than my eyes or, you know, the coaching staff, whether you guys were good, whether you guys could, you know, how do you measure up with somebody else, you know, uh, amongst your peers. So we took you to uh, the top 100 and then uh, – Coach Bridges, who ended up being the scout for the Braves, uh, 
he said, uh, yeah, but we want y'all, we don't have your shirts, but we, we'll, we'll meet y'all up in, what was it, was it? Uh, Atlanta. It was at, uh, Kennesaw? Yeah, Kennesaw, yes, Kennesaw. yes. Oh, yeah. We'll meet you at university, uh, Kennesaw University. Anyway, um, so you're there, you're amongst the top 100. There's scouts, there's travel team uh, coaches and managers and folks looking for the best ball players and you amongst some of the names that you've seen in the, the Georgia Dugout Club magazines and the you know All Americans and all that stuff. Right. And then you're standing in front of the dugout and you take a swing, I think you either pop up or something like that, and then you, you at the dugout and you're looking up at the stands at me. It like I'm going to explain something to you from from the from the uh, bleachers. Right. Then I gave you that Forrest Gump wave, right? I gave you that. Hey, Robert, how you doing? And the reason uh, I did that is once you're on a team, you have to find a pecking order. Right. You know, you have to figure out what your spot is on the team rather than trying to figure out what your dad's trying to convey to you in the stands. Later on, you got used to not looking up there to see what was going on every swing by swing, and you, you received an award from cricket, you know, from the five tool. Um, can you explain what that award was and um, how, you know, that moment, hey, you realize you got to be a part of the team and uh, whatever it is, whether you be, whether you're picking somebody up or whether you're giving somebody words of wisdom or whether right. you're allowing somebody to, to help you, um, explain what that award was and, and, and how that tied into what we went through at that time? Uh, it was like a A through Z award or something like that. It had nothing to do with performance. It had nothing to do with how you did on the field. It was all about being a, a good teammate, somebody that goes extra miles for their team, and just trying to be a good human being in general. Uh, I've always been the person to, hey, this will trash pick up, hey, clean it up, because the next team's coming in. It's just basic respect stuff. Uh, I've always been about that, especially in baseball. Just, hey, if you respect the game and all that stuff. Now, I'm not superstitious to the point like, hey, if you respect the game, you'll get three hits next game. No, that depends on the work. But it's just the right thing to do. Uh, and I've always been about picking teammates up because the game's hard enough as it yeah. is. So you see guys beating themselves up uh, because they struck out or made a bad play. Hey, they need somebody at that time to tell them, next play. We ain't worried about it. It's, it's, it's on to the next thing. So uh, that's always been who I am as a, just as a person. So mm -hmm. uh, it was easy to translate on the field because uh, if I'm not doing, if I'm off that day, I need somebody to say something. It always helps when somebody can come and say something and say, hey, man, shake it off onto the next thing. So Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's just to close out what you're talking about, uh, you know, I, I, I sort of felt like, you know, your, your teammates at Georgia, you know, they, they took to you. And even at Mount Olive, it just seemed like you know, even – you even have some relationships through social media with a, with a bunch of them. Y'all stay right. stay in contact with each other. Right. But I remember um, uh, you was playing against LSU, and you I was on uh, I don't know sports cast or something. It was some, something on cable, yeah. and they brought in at the end of the game some left hander to yes. to to try to get you out. And I just I recall instead of you yanking, you just sort of went to the left field with it, and I was like. Yeah. You know, that's my boy. It's, you know, it's another big situation that you came through, but more so how excited your team teammates were for you in doing that time. So that was that was pretty neat to see. All right, uh, Aaron, Mr. Aaron. Uh, what I recall is we have 10 players your senior year uh, at Brooks County. One of them is a girl. <laughs> <laughs> and you're essentially, you know, you're, you're the leader of the team. Um, and the, the team that eventually drafted you, he had to make sure he didn't mention that, he had a, that we had a girl on the team. Now, they had no idea it was uh, Shelby Hires who later, you know, went to the University of Arkansas and played professional all softball. Everything. She was all everything. Yeah. But... If he had, if he had told him that we had a girl on the team, he would have never came and seen you <laughs> because he couldn't take a team with a girl on the team that serious, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, I don't think he's the only one. I think it was a couple of guys that let yeah. the guys know that, hey, this team has a girl on yeah, the team. Yeah, there, there was a few teams that said, that, said that. Yeah, although, you know, she was a straight G. I mean, yeah. she was really good. Yeah. And, and anyway, um, that year you had to lead a team who had 10 players. <laughs> How and, and what 
sort of drove drove you to lead the team and what sort of we had some heartbreaking losses. Mm -hmm. What what sort of mentality did you take to we ended up going to the playoffs to help us get to the playoffs? Um that was uh that was a year of ups and downs, a lot a lot going on just like personally because we had never seen the amount of scouts and attention that we that we saw even at perfect games and different things like that. So just I mean, we played ADL, you're talking about a hundred hundred scouts all over the place. So personally it was it was kind of it was tough because I'm focused on performing myself, but at the same time, um, I remember Coach Rod telling me back in tenth grade, like, hey, I understand you you in tenth grade, but you're a leader on this team. Mm -hmm. So I've always kind of took that mentality even from back then that like, like hey some people may be older than me um some people don't necessarily look like me but at the same time they look up to me because of the ability i have and like care of myself mm -hmm. um so i've always i've always had that type of mentality um i believe it led to a level of, of success for, for that team in general mm -hmm. um just getting the respect out of those guys and just making sure that uh, that i set an example of working hard and um, and being open and available to everybody. And I think it went a long way with that group. Yeah. And also transitioning into, into some pro ball as well. Yeah. Uh, Paul Snyder. Paul Snyder, mm -hmm. legendary scout. Um, I think I think he's in the Hall of Fame uh, for, late, for being a scout for the Atlanta Braves. Um, he would come, uh, for example, he came to the Berrien game, watching mm -hmm. pitch there. Yep. And... Um, I almost had to swing on because he kept smooshing and kissing, yeah. him, kissing on your mom. <laughs> I'm like, hold on now, we handshake here in Georgia. Now. <laughs> Too much smooshing and kissing, carrying on. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, man, he he took a real interest in you, mm -hmm. you know, just because of the storyline and, and how you carried yourself. Mm -hmm. Now let's let's fast fast forward. Let's fast forward. You know that. You you were a speed game. Mm -hmm. You were a speed game. You had you know you had a ninety eight arm from the outfield, run really fast, and you know you made up your mind that anybody that's going to run with you, you know anybody say run, you say let's go. Yeah. You know you, you wasn't turning anybody down like they do nowadays. Mm -hmm. So we're at the old Atlanta Braves Stadium. Turner Field. Turner Field. Mm -hmm. We're at Turner Field, and this old dude come up to you. Y'all walk around. He, you take it for granted a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's uh, what's say Frank Rand's son. Yeah, Frank Rand's son. He's Kyle, 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 Kyle Rand. It's Kyle, Kyle Rand. So you didn't think Kyle could run out, ride out. So tell, tell me about just the barnstorming we had to do uh, and you personally mm -hmm. having to perform all those times just to just to um, be seen. I, I don't know how many folks come out of Brooks County and get yeah. you, know, you know that high, but the things you had to do Personally, you mm -hmm. know, uh, let's start with the Braves thing okay. first, and then the things you had to do sure. to uh, get to where you got to. Um, I'm at Turner Field, and a, a guy comes up to me, skinny, uh, skinny white guy. So, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, this is, I got him. Um, little did I know. That uh, once they dropped the hat, he was gonna take off on me, and he took off. <laughs> took off. I had to catch him. I, I got the win. <laughs> just no, I, I got the win. But man, I was panicking. I was, I was panicking right because in my head I'm thinking I got this. Now there's there's been some guys that I know, you know, you know automatically like I got to get off the line because this mm -hmm. guy can run. I wasn't thinking um, that this guy, but. Ended up, uh, I, I want to say I ran him twice, beat him twice, because I was ready that second time, but that first time he, <laughs> he pulled off on me. But, um, man, I, we went everywhere. We went all over the place. Um, pretty much everywhere we were invited to go, we, we went when we could. Mm -hmm. um, we, Bruce County is a small place, Quickman is a small place, and to get exposure, you got to go. You got you to gotta get out there, you got to go to Atlanta and and to the Jupiter, Florida's, and the, the, the bigger areas where the where the attention is. Mm -hmm. um, it's just what's required if you want to play at the next level. Um, yeah. We went to Minnesota and did the mm -hmm. you know did the showcase there. We went to California and did the the, the uh, breakthrough series. Yeah. I mean, 
pretty much everywhere we were invited when we were able to go, we went because we understood that the exposure is what we needed to get to the next level. Yeah. Um, during that during that time, you, we ran into a lot of people, a lot of big names that we read about and see. Mm -hmm. And uh, I oftentimes talk to uh, younger players about that starstruck type of thing. Right. And I remember seeing that at the East Coast Showcase, a lot of guys used to read about, hear about. Um, very talented individuals, but focusing on the things that you do well mm -hmm. and making sure in that in that showcase environment that you do them well. And for me, it was always the 60s where I need to shine. Yeah. And then, you know, I run a good solid 60, throw well. Mm -hmm. I'm not going, I ain't going to hit no home runs, but mm -hmm. I'm going to go line drive over the shortstop's head. I'm going to focus on what I can do well, and that's what I'm going to focus on. Right, that's right. So um, to, to follow up and, and sort of, you know, segue into Caleb a little bit, you're, you're in. Uh, where are you when you, you and Caleb end up playing each other? You and Beloit. Oh, and oh, and pro ball. Pro ball. Uh, might have been just, Yeah, probably high, but we played no, each no, other. No, no. What, 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 what city were you in? Because we were visiting. Were we visiting at the time? Yeah, we were visiting at the time. Um, wherever they had the hibachi. Burlington. Burlington. Oh, Burlington. 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 So yeah. Was, was low in there. Bur Burlington. <laughs> and um, we come up, you a little bit, a little bit homesick, mm -hmm. okay? Because we come up, we get the hotel, you and the, you, you live with the other guys, but you stay in our hotel. Yeah. <laughs> you, you hang out. So you get to see a friend. Mm -hmm. You playing them that day, you know? And Caleb. Across, he walks across the field. You guys meet. What was that like, both of you? What was that like to to see a face that you grew up with, but you both playing pro balls, and you guys are uh, pro prop. You guys are higher in the um, in the minor league system uh, for the big league clubs. It's hard to hard to describe, man, because we just came from such a such a long way, you know. And uh, I mean, we're almost. I think. I want to say we might have met at like eight, nine years old, something like that. So, sure. just, yeah. So to come from from that all the way to there, and and to have that moment was just surreal, you know. At that level and and during that time, um, and that's shortly after we got drafted. So coming off of one of the you know the best times of our life, and you're working through the minors, which is yeah. just. It's a different ball. Game. It's a different ball game. You know? <laughs> so to, yeah. to to have that moment and to see him across the field and to em, embrace him, man, nothing nothing like it. Caleb, what about you? Yeah, I would say very much the similar thing, but it, it would it goes back to a testament of yourself, my dad, all the people that were in South Georgia that really believed in us as a young age. You know, um, that was the whole full circle to see. Wow, this is really cool that we're getting to experience playing, you know, being paid to play this game that we love, that we started at, you know, the Boys and Girls Club of Barasa when we were eight and nine years old. Mm -hmm. um, like Aaron said, it was surreal. It was awesome. It was awesome to just see such a good friend on the other side competing against. And, yeah. Um, just, it, it was just awesome. Caleb, you you had, for as, for as much as you were honored, uh, you you went through a lot too. Uh, I think naturally, uh, I think uh, it's human uh, for some, especially if if they're on, uh, outside looking in. You know, they see this guy. He's the you know Gatorade you know national player of the year. Um, it's his first pick in the draft, in the in, uh, first pick for a professional team, and all the glitz and glamour that come with that. Uh, you you certainly have to be aware of haterade. You know, folks. <laughs> Uh, who, who may not have done a tenth and gone through a tenth of what you've been through have so much to say negatively uh, about you. Um, on your way up, you know, did you experience that through, through the minor leagues or whether it be a, some sort of scout that didn't agree with what they thought you should be? And uh, I, I think, how did you feel when you ultimately made it to the big leagues, you know, and you know you're playing on the same team with Mike Trout, and you hit the hit your first home run and stuff like that. Is is that something you think about? Is is that something that helps fuel you to continue to get to that point? Those type of 